Hello, gorgeous gray women. It's Nicole Scott tuning in here from Canada, and I've got a new interview, which I'm so excited. Um, we are going to be interviewing Jennifer from Canada, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about where she's from and her journey. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you. I'm, I'm just excited. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to kind of get your story and your message out. I want to kind of um, as you guys know, I, I find these new silver sisters on Instagram and, uh, as a lot of you will probably already been following her, she's got a huge following well over 26,000. Um, you know her as the silver Canuck. So you guys, um, can, uh, look her up the underscore silver underscore Canuck, um, background in writing. She's a silver sister. She's into fashion. She's unique. She definitely stands out. Um, I very entertained by her Instagram uh, last I February, 2021 um, and a true Canadian. So welcome. <laughs> and let's dive into um, the question that um, people around the world are like, what the heck is a Canuck? <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple of people write to me DMS and say, what's a Canuck? And one person misspelled it too. It was cute. It's simply a nickname for a Canadian. And I, I think that term has been used for over a century. Yeah. And uh, these days it tends to be associated with the Vancouver Canucks hockey team. And I'm certainly not a hockey fan, but um, yeah, I just, I've, I've used, uh, I, I used to use the uh, nickname Jenny Canuck online. And I thought silver Canuck that I like that simple and to the point. Love it. Love it. So <laughs> let's dive in. Too. Biggest You're also question. A yeah, thank you. The biggest question that yeah. um, a woman will have for a woman that is walking down the street with silver hair is, oh my gosh, why did you do it? Tell me why. <laughs> well, Nicole, I started going silver at age 22. At the time I was living in Ottawa and I was, uh, I was finishing university. And I remember writing in my diary that I'd found my first silver hair. And someday I'm going to track down that passage from a diary. I have about seven diaries in a cupboard. And I'm going to go through them someday and find that to see what, what was the date when I found the first silver hair. So, so genetically, I, I you know, was predispo predisposed to uh, youthful silvering. Um, I never hated it. I didn't resent it in any way. I thought it made me distinctive. Um, but I suppose back in my 20s and 30s, I just assumed that dyeing it was the thing to do, like many of us, like most of us. Um, I wanted to use semi-permanent or, or um, very temporary dyes, but what happened was I didn't really understand um, that the, the stylists don't use those products so much. They're using permanent dye. So I ended up with permanently dyed hair. And of course, what that leads to is this horrendous <laughs> uh, skunk line, we call it, right? Yeah. When, yeah. when my hair was, was dyed dark brown, mm -hmm. and then the roots would be white as snow. And I really, I really abhor that look. I can't stand it. I don't mind it. anybody else. But in my, in my own head, I just didn't like that. So getting rid of that was, or that uh, living with the skunk line, or the line of demarcation was very, was really a, a strong motivation. But the bigger motivation was I was just overwhelmed with curiosity. What does my hair really look like? Um, I used to wish I could just wake up one morning with my own hair color. And to me, it all ties into body positivity. You know, I'm really, I'm really I'm very much about body positivity age positivity as much as I can. And, and so dyeing my hair was denying that part of, of what makes me me, right? Um, I, I just really felt a, a, a strong uh, abiding urge to, to know what, what, I, what that was like. And I felt that strongly for the last eight or 10 years, mm -hmm. but I felt trapped because of, of the dye and that, that line of demarcation. What happened was early 2021, I started to Google this stuff. <laughs> really smart move. And I found um, Facebook group, Silver Sisters, you know, like so many of us was astonished by the before and after photos. 
um, astonished at how all of the beautiful women, they looked better with their own color. Um, it was, an, it was a, incredible to see these transformations. I decided then and there, I'm doing it. And if you look at pictures of me from that time, there's a new kind of joy in, in the eyes. And I wasn't silver yet, but I knew I was going there and it felt great. You know, if it, it was so, it just felt so right. And I, and so I talked to my stylist and, and uh, about ways that I could make it work. And we did some highlighting and that was, that was sort of the beginning of, of the whole transformation that was uh, early 2021. And I've not once for one second regretted it, Nicole. That's amazing. Well, it like you, it looks so good on you and the skin tone, and that that's I think the biggest shock for so many of us is um, yeah. is the shock of going. I actually feel younger. I look younger. Um, I feel more confident, and um, I think all of us get so shocked. We're like, I would have never thought. Um, so you did uh, you did a blended. You didn't do gold. Uh, do cold turkey but you did like a blended um experience and yeah. um so how did you deal with that demarcation line that so many women fear did you just own it or did you try to hide it for those first kind of four to six months well it was it was pretty astonishing my hairstylist for first of all I have to say she was so I think I've already mentioned this so supportive stylists I've had in the past would say things like you're too young to go silver. I had one stylist who said, I, I asked her, oh, this was a good 10, 12 years ago. I asked her how, you know, whether she could help me with the transition. And she said, I wouldn't know how, because I've never been asked. Right. <laughs> and even, you know, even in my mid thirties, I remember a stylist saying to me, face it, honey, you're 70% gray. As if it was this horrible thing, right? So finally I have a stylist, Heather, who is so skilled and she said sure you know it was just this positivity about it this sure we can do it and I went to her uh spring of 2021 I probably had an inch and a half of silver at that point with very dark colored hair it didn't look good <laughs> I I think for some women the cold turkey looks great for me it wasn't working and so she cut off quite a bit, uh, cut a few, maybe two or three inches of hair. And she did just a lot of highlighting, mostly throughout the front. And as a result of that, um, there was no sort of shocking demarcation line. Okay. I'm really grateful for her skill. And um, I just, you know, I instantly looked brightened up and it just, I really felt like that was a turning point. Then I was, I was going down that road. I was um, ready to, ready to roll. And I, I didn't, I, I really don't think that I've ever felt terribly self-conscious about the roots. No, um, it helps. I think that I work at home. <laughs> um, so I, it's not like I'm around a lot of people. So I was, it just wasn't something that bothered me. Yeah. I think it's different for every woman, right? The way the process, and we can't just paint a picture to say, we're all going to hate it, or we're all going to love it. It's a, it's such a different journey. Um, yeah. So thank you for sharing that. So let's dive in a little bit about um, now you're, it looks like you're fully transitioned. Is that where you're I'm, at now? Or? It, it, see, it's deceptive. And I like yeah. that because in the front, it looks fully transitioned, yeah. but in the back, you can see there's still a lot of yeah. color. I don't know if you can okay. see that. Yeah, I saw some brown. I saw some under. Yep. Yeah. You see yeah. this sort of yeah, sort of light brown. Okay. Um, so I guess we're down to natural down to here. Right. Okay. So it's it's getting there. Yeah. Um and underneath, <laughs> what's been nice to discover is I actually do have still some dark right under here yeah so what i'm going to do to make it unique is let the dark lower part grow longer yeah a little longer than the silver yeah and that's going to kind of create a neat sort of um dark dark section at the bottom 
yeah. that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going with it. So I'm hoping by next year, it'll be fully transitioned. Oh, I like that. Yeah. My neighbor <laughs> does that. She does a blonde on top, but then uh -huh. she le leaves her dark and it looks so beautiful. That kind of two-tone look, and it'll look so nice in silver. I don't think I've seen um, many in that look. So I think that'll be a really neat look to, to watch for and to see you doing it. It's uh <laughs> being different. Well, let's talk about you being different. Like, okay, you <laughs> totally stand out. Uh, you Thank caught you. my attention with your glam, your humor. Um, the, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say that, say it. I think you look like a movie star. You show okay. up as a movie star <laughs> star. Um, where does that come from? You are an entertainer. Oh, well, let me tell you the <sighs> story. Um, 100 years ago, in Carboneer, Newfoundland, right on the coast, my great grandfather ran a tailor shop and he made beautiful wool suits. And uh, then his, my grandmother, his daughter was an expert seamstress, made beautiful clothing. My mother and her twin sister grew up in the best clothing in central Newfoundland because their mother was so skilled. And so this is kind of, there's sort of this history of appreciating fashion and try and dressing with a little bit of pizzazz. Mm. And even my dad, um, he died two years ago, but my dad, oh, he had this big collection of ties, which I've inherited. They're upstairs about 50 ties. And dad, you know, would go around town in his fedora. Um, and so I kind of just grew up, grew up with both parents taking a lot of pride in, in dressing nicely. And uh, certainly my mother and her twin sister were just wild about dresses and rhinestones and satin and lace. And I just, they, they had a great flair for it. And I really feel like even though I, I don't make clothing, I feel like I've inherited some of that, 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 that passion for fashion, that uh, appreciation of, of um, beauty in, in, mm -hmm. in, in fashions and, and a sense of style. I, I, I find it tremendously fun. Um, and it's, I always say that with makeup, hair, clothing, it's a way that some of us bring out or express the colors that we feel on the inside. Oh, and I so love it's, that. To, to me, it's essential to mental health. I'm very big on mental health. Um, and, and I think to me, fashion is just a very healthy, fun way of feeling good. And so I have this closet because I've been a jazz singer and uh, I have this closet full of dresses. <laughs> and during the pandemic, they were just hanging there and it was sort of sad, really. And when I started this account in January of this year, I don't know, at some point it just occurred to me to start putting the dresses on instead of just making it about my hair. And um, I just had such a blast. And every time I dress up, even if I don't go out, I feel better. So I could be having uh, a bit of a bad day or feeling a bit low. But if I, if I get myself gussied up, it's to me, it's therapy. It just feels good. And so I think I always say, I believe in finding what, any way that's healthy and legal to feel good, especially through the pandemic and through getting older and all the other challenges we face in life. If we can have something that gives us a boost, uh, we're lucky people. And that, that's what the fashion does for me that's what my Instagram account does for me it just gives me a chance to have fun without even leaving the house <laughs> I love it it's to me to me my Instagram account is like a very genuine expression of what's in here and certain people in my family find it a bit weird <laughs> <laughs> my, my reels and things they find it a bit a bit uh extreme yeah. or wild but I told I had to say to my mother but I am a wild woman you know <laughs> and it's it's just it's a very authentic representation of of what I'm feeling on the inside and it's so that so again goes back to good mental health it contributes to good mental health 
I, I love it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going out next week and it's been a while since I've worn dresses. And so it's almost like you've given me that permission to get back into a, a dress again and, and feel like a woman or, you know, the word sexy or just feeling good in your, in. So anyways, I've been pulling out my dresses. So I think I'll do a reel in honor of you oh, um, and to put on a dress that makes me feel good. And maybe we can do some type of a challenge on our silver sister community is pull out that dress that you have been dying to wear. And um, let's, I don't know, what could we create a new hashtag around? Oh gosh, silver glam. I'm not sure. Um, it's a great glam. idea. I, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, even when I go out now, I'm, I'm saying, I think I'll wear a dress. You know, I think even if I'm just going in St. John, we call it uptown, not downtown. If I'm going to go uptown for a couple of hours, I'll wear a dress. So last week, I'll give you, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I wore this 50 style bright red dress with black polka dots. And I wore a great big um, green straw hat and a black shawl. And I just felt good. And I was walking around uptown and there happened to be a cultural festival going on and a painter was there with an easel. Do you know that he did a, he ended up doing a painting of me? <laughs> Because he got, he got such a kick out of the, um, I guess the flamboyance and the color of my outfit. And he thought I was part of the cultural festival. And he said, which culture? Or, and he said, which nation are you representing? And I said, I'm representing my own nation. <laughs> anyway, about three weeks later, I see this painting on the internet that he did um, inspired by that encounter. And I, I, I felt so honored by that. And I just think, I think if we wear a, uh, something bright and cheerful looking, or we wear a cute hat, I find hats have a lot of power to do this. They make people smile. Mm -hmm. And even if you're just making someone smile for two seconds in their day, or go, wow, that looks cheerful. I just feel good about that. I, real, I, I find it particularly with hats though. <laughs> Um, or, 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 or a bright dress. And I, uh, so it's, it's not just about expressing myself. It's about trying to put some color and happiness into the world. Does I that love sound it. Silly? <laughs> it doesn't sound silly. And I, I just want to um, say thank you and commend you for what you are doing, that you're following your heart and um, you're putting a lot of smiles on uh, smiles on people's face when we've gone through some tough times. And I know that you had mentioned some tough challenges, um, but there were things that kept you going. Did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I can't get into too much detail out of respect for my family's, you know, mm -hmm. privacy, but, but I can say that it's been a, it, we've had a couple of difficult years. My dad passed away in um, the first year of the pandemic. So it was the end of August of 2020. And then another family member began having serious health issues. Mm -hmm. um, so over the last year, I've spent a lot of time in hospitals as a visitor. Um, you know, just even a couple of months ago, I was visiting the hospital every day for almost three weeks. And, you know, it's easy to look at someone's Instagram and think, wow, what a great life she has. She's all dressed up, smiling, but that's only part of the story, right? But the fact is that even through those hard times, uh, it, it helps to, it has helped me to uh, uh, find some solace in, in dressing up. And uh, the other thing is that um, sometimes at my lowest moments, when things were really difficult, uh, I would catch sight of the silver hair in the mirror, so let's say under the fluorescent lights and the bathroom mirror at the hospital at 4 a.m. and think, well, if everything, everything else is difficult right now, but this is going well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the silver is like um, a, a, a source of comfort and uh, it, gives, it gives me a little bit of a sense that, well, no matter what else happens in life, at least I'm doing this. This is something I've wanted to do for more than a decade. To, 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 to show my authentic hair color and to feel good about that and to be proud of that. It feels good. It just, it just, it's this one, it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny how much impact it's had 
but it gives me a little bit of a lift and comfort even in the most difficult times. That's incredible because I think the old story that maybe you and I both had in a lot of Silver Sisters, that we would have thought the opposite. We would have thought that the life isn't going well. So I'm going to do something to perk myself up. And yeah. typically we have a list of things as women that will perk ourselves up. And I would say the top probably two or three for, for a woman is let's go to the hairdresser yeah, and get a different cut, get a color, change up the color and forget for a moment of the chaos that is yeah. happening. But for us as Silver Sisters, we, we know once we have dived into this journey that it shows up differently for us. We have a different story around it. So um, that's beautiful to hear. So as we close off this interview, this is my kind of last question. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lot of women watching this. They're going to be in awe of your story. They'll be following you. They'll be getting more smiles. I think more women will be dressing up in dresses because of this interview, um, maybe wearing more hats just to put them in the space of joy. Um, if there is a woman watching this and they're still sitting on the fence, they're not sure if they want to take this journey or path, they're scared. Um, what would your advice be for them? I would just say, follow your own hearts and, and your, what your, what, what you, what your soul is telling you to do. If you want to keep coloring your hair, like my mom is 89 and colors her hair and she loves that. Right. So if, 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 if a woman loves coloring her hair and wants to keep doing it. I say, bra brava, sister, keep going. Um, but if, if, you, if you're like me and have this curiosity about what you really look like um, and want to express that, it's, it's really not that hard, you know? And there's so much inspiration available now. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I don't know that I would have done it last year as decisively without the inspiration of the Silver Sisters online. Um, and, and I would say that, um, yeah, find that inspiration easily on Facebook, the Silver Sisters groups or on Instagram or, or elsewhere. Um, there's so much support available. And it can seem like it takes a long time to grow out the silver but at once we're at my I'm over 50 we know how fast a year goes <laughs> so while it does feel slow sometimes it also seems wow that went quick I can't believe how how much has grown so I wouldn't worry too much about how long it's going to take even within six months to a year you're going to be making good progress and like we all know, we in the Silver Sisters community, we talk about the fact that it's not just about hair. Uh, it's about an unbelievable sense of confidence and a new feeling that can come from this transformation. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even know how to describe it exactly. But okay, no, I do know. I do know what to say about that, Nicole. I would say that when you learn to recognize the beauty in silver hair and in your your own hair mm -hmm. and feel good about that i think it then becomes easier to see the beauty in other aspects of getting older that's been that the is so part. well said i don't think i've had one lady on my interviews that um said it so well because it's hard sometimes to describe what we go through in this transition and, and women try to describe it. And I really resonate with your words, which is ex more accepting of the other things that start to show up over 50. Yeah. And compassion, well, would that be a word that we would use? Compassion, you think, Jennifer? Uh -huh. Compassion for ourselves or for others? Yeah, for ourselves, right? And then more, yeah. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say too, I would say quite openly that when I turned 50, I, I didn't particularly like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would okay. wake up in the morning and I'd go, oh, I'm 50. And it was, it was kind of a, felt like an ending or I didn't know who I was becoming or what what was I, I just it was just not a good feeling mm -hmm. and now four years later I realize how fortunate I am 
to be healthy, I feel great physically, not always emotionally, but I feel great physically. Um, I love having my own hair color and I'm, I'm happy. I'm just having more fun. So it's, it's not, so I, I think, I think it's, yeah, I've learned that the, the, the transition to silver has helped me open my eyes to the fact that this is not a horrible <laughs> fate to be 50 plus that this is actually, there's, there's actually fun to be had and good, you know, good times ahead and dreams to, to, to have ambitions. Um, we, we can't just give up. We have to keep trying new things. And for me, for me as an example, uh, starting this Instagram account and trying and you know, developing as, as an influencer now and sort of establishing as an influencer, one of the biggest surprises of my life <laughs> that, that this has happened and I'm making this happen. It's just one example of how even when you're getting older, there can still be wonderful surprises and delights and in life. It, 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 it's the, the, I get a lot of this, honestly, from, from women on the internet. I, I have to mention Claudia from The Beauty Debut, at The Beauty Debut on Instagram, um, was a huge influence on me last year because she's my age. And she's glam and and she was just so open about being 53 all the time. Whereas I was kind of, should we keep this secret? And so now I'm really open about it. And I feel it's such, there's such a liberal, it's so liberating. It's it's energizing. And I think it's sexy to to say, yeah, I'm 54 and I'm having a good time. <laughs> oh. and, I'm, and, I, and there's nothing to be ashamed of, and there's nothing to hide. It's such a good message, this interview, right? And, you know, we really are redefining beauty and health and um, how we can show up to the world, this whole movement that we're a part of. And I'm just so proud to be a part of it and so honored to interview women like yourself that um, are stepping into this new stage of, um, it's like a, a second birth almost, I find, you know, when I say 50 is kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle Cause my, you know, I'm like, I want another 50, like, give me another 50 God yeah. <laughs> give me, and I will, I will show up for you. I will, you know, be the best version of me. I will, we, you know, I will do good. I will serve others. I will yeah. have fun. I will be playful. And I think if we can create that energy within our community, other women will follow. So thank you so much, Jennifer. I think you and I could talk for a long time. We're also Canadians and Canadians, we can yeah. have some great conversations. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your, um, your heart, your authenticity. And uh, I am going to get glammed up today and do a reel in the honor of um, your, your uh, mission and oh, let's I love see. That. So here, how about this? Could we do silver hashtag silver uptown funk? Oh my gosh. I, I think that would be fantastic. We do that one. <laughs> hey, silver so, uptown funk. And I do love that song too. I mean, yeah, love it. <laughs> okay. So this is it. We're going to do a silver sister challenge. It's just going to be hashtag silver. Should we do silver okay. sisters or just silver silver sisters uh -huh. uptown funk? Okay. Yes. Okay, Silver Sisters, Uptown Funk. We're going to get this momentum going in honor of your page and get women dressing up in glam and uh, that <laughs> song and create this massive energy of women having fun and being playful over the next week. So watch out for what we're going to um, create on Instagram. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. So appreciate you. Can't wait for this interview to get out for more women to be inspired by your message. And I, I'm so honored again and, and thrilled that you invited me. I thank you for this opportunity. And I have to say, you know, you're a great example. You're ahead of most of us in terms of um, the, the silver discovery and transition and um, a, real, a real leader in, in this um, movement, if we could use that word for it. So bravo, bravo to you and thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, gorgeous gray women for tuning into this amazing interview.